Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 12 of Project Ozone 3. So yesterday, we worked hard to make our sacrificial dagger. And with this, we can now start draining our blood into the blood altar to start doing magic. So the way that, it's pretty simple. You just right-click, and each time you right-click, it drains one heart from you and puts a little bit, I think, uh, 100 or maybe 200 life essence into the blood altar. If you look at it, at the very beginning, when you first start filling your life, your blood altar, a little bit of it will drain away. Um, it's a little difficult to explain, but there's a second, like, hidden fluid tank in here that's for, um, like, fluid IO, but uh, don't worry about it. I think there's, like, a by default, like, your first thousand blood will drain away. And you can see, um, while we have uh, saturation, our health regenerates pretty quickly. But at some point, you know, when we run out of saturation here, our health starts regenerating pretty slowly. So by eating food, we can, you know, increase our regen rate. And there's various other things we can do. But um, my favorite way to regenerate is just with the regeneration buff. So uh, I did some thinking, and I decided, why don't we make sure we have a steady supply of these enchanted golden apples for while we do blood magic? So, where do these enchanted golden apples come from? Well, we could craft them. I mean, the recipe's not bad. It's, um, blocks of golden apples. But blocks of gold are a little annoying, right? Because you have to use the factorizer to combine them. But then I saw that they also come out of loot bags. So, uh, last night I built a loot bag machine off camera. Um, mostly because I wasn't sure if it would work at all. But, uh, it turns out it works pretty well. So let me show you how this, uh, entire scheme here works. So we start with our uh, loot bag storage, which, oops, that's not it, our loot bag storage, which is now empty because I've, you know, I've opened all the bags, right? This is our mob farm. Um, the loot bags that get dropped in the mob farm get stored. I convert them all through the loot bag storage into legendary loot bags, just because I think they have the cleanest loot table. And then they go into a number of loot bag openers or bag openers that just, you know, open them. Uh, a small issue I ran into with this is that you can only insert items one at a time into the loot bag opener or into bag openers. So you can't use these Ender IO conduits because they um, they insert items four at a time. And in fact, even let me show you, uh, even if you use these extract speed downgrades, it still doesn't work. So here it's four items per. If you put one downgrade in, wait a second. Oh, I didn't consider that. Okay, so never mind. It works. Um, it's just backwards, I guess. If you put, I just directly put three downgrades in and thought that that would make it, you know, one item per second. But apparently, it's one downgrade is one item per second, and then they're upgrades from there on, and then two, and then three. Okay, well, good to know. So I guess if you do want to use uh, item conduits, you have to use exactly one extract speed downgrade, not three like I was trying. Good to know. Um, anyways, I already set this up. I'm probably not going to change it over. So after that, all the loot gets collected into a single chest where we uh, filter most of it off. So all chargeable items. Um, if we look at the loot, that includes Dark Bow, uh, the Ender, Staff of Traveling, maybe something else. Basically, anything that has an RF meter, I just throw away. I don't. I don't need that many. You know, Dark Bows, Enders, whatever. Um, likewise for the tombstone spells, so those are the scrolls, mostly because I don't really care for them or use them, and they don't stack. And then the other thing, interesting things are the Ender Isle loot capacitors, which I just collect, and um, maybe at some point I'll go through them and pick out the good ones. I installed the mod that shows their quality, so like this one, ooh, that's a good one for the soul binder. You know, I'll take it now and put it into our soul binder. Um, Anyways, that's a loot cap, and if all of these crates fill up, then they'll go into a trash can just so that the system never backstuffs. And then one more for dark steel upgrades. So those are these things. Um, so it's like if I ever start using dark steel armor or its upgrades, uh, I can just pull upgrades out of here instead of having to craft them. And likewise, if our crates fill up, they get voided. And lastly, we have the uh, drawer wall. This is everything else that comes out of 
the loot bags, which includes golden apples. So we have nine stacks of enchanted golden apples. That'll provide us plenty of regen for doing blood magic. And the other thing pretty exciting is we have two and a half stacks of blacker lotuses. I think it takes about 10 of these to fill a Batania mana pool. So in a pinch, if we you know need mana now and can't wait for the flowers to generate it, we have a lot of mana just sitting around in item form. Cool. The rest of this is, I think, situationally useful at best. I mean, like, these are buckets, you know, these are blaze rods. Uh, what's in this soul vial? Shulker. That's not so useful. So anyways, um, yeah, this is just a very simple loot bag opening system. Uh, cool. So let's get back to blood magic. So one of the first things we want to craft in our newly completed blood altar is the weak blood orb. There are uh, multiple tiers of Blood Orb, I guess five. I think there might be more than five. But um, these are non-consumed items used in crafting recipes. Think like, uh, I don't know, like buckets. Um, they also can store your life essence and are used for a bunch of things. So we'll actually need multiple of these. But I just looked at the recipe for it, and it takes a Lordcraft rune. So let's uh, take a quick detour, uh, once again, into Lordcraft and get into runestone crafting. We have all the materials for this, thankfully, so um, this shouldn't be... I hope this isn't a long detour, but I actually have never done the rune crafting system in Lordcraft before, so I don't even know how to interpret this recipe, but let's learn together. Alright, so runestone crafting doesn't seem all that complicated now that I've looked into it, besides being a case of uh, pretty deeply nested crafting. So, step one, you have to make a simple runestone. And that's just made by taking mana infused shards, surrounding it with stone, alright. Oh, they don't stack. Alright, well, today I learned. Let's, uh, let's store these. Well, anyways, um, now we have plenty of simple runestones. And then, uh, I guess there are different types of runestone. So, the simple stone, you can craft it into a or it starts as an offensive stone, you can craft it into a utility stone or a defensive stone, um, just with itself. I don't know how necessary that is, but uh, anyways, the next thing we have to do is upgrade the simple stone to a lordic stone. So to do that, you have to craft, surround it with lordic stone, which is just, uh, okay, any stone and mana infused shards in arcane forge, so I'll go make some of that. So I have the materials to do the craft, but I won't begin, and that's because I don't have Transform Research unlocked. Right? If we look in our quest book, or not our quest book, our research book, Transform is still locked. So I have to figure out why that is. I recall seeing in the quest book here that... Yeah, activating a... Translocation matrix will unlock the transform research, even though I've definitely already done that. Let me make another transformation matrix and we can try that again. Alright, here we go. So it's still locked, and this I'm told would unlock it, but that definitely didn't do it. Do I have to like swap myself? No. Um let me do some searching. Maybe this is just old news. Well, according to all the documentation I found both online and even in the quest book itself, uh, suggests that this should be what it takes to unlock Transform. So I'm a little at a loss. Um, maybe just to uh, try something, let's head over to the Lordcraft Dimension and try doing some quests. Here we are once again in the uh, questing room. I don't know what it's called. So I think at first only the water lord will talk to you. The rest are like, I'm too stuck up to talk to you. So, um, sure. All right, what is the quest? Do I have to check my book? Maybe I should have, you know, read as I went. Quest journal can be opened with X. Kill a spider. All right, I can do that. Let's go kill a spider. Pew pew, kill spider. 
Did that do the quest? Done. All right, let's head over back to the Water Lord thingy and turn it in. All right, buddy, I did your quest. Can I turn it in? Do I choose one of these? How do I ask you about quests? I wish to hand in a quest. Thank you. I wish to start a new quest. Oh, can I get multiples? No, I cannot. All right. I need a blaze rod. I can do that. Easiest quest of my life. Uh, there's a lot of text here, and I don't feel like reading it. I think he referred me to another guy. I mean, maybe it's my fault for not reading any of this, but... Cast Rejuvenation. I don't want to cast a spell. Let's see if I learned the quest, or learned the research. No, no, let's go hit the, uh, the translocation thingy one more time. If this doesn't work, I'm really at a loss. All right. No, am I not close enough? I don't understand. Locked. Huh. All right, I figured it out. So the nice folks over at the uh, Project Ozone 3 Discord were able to help me. Turns out, instead not just swapping any block, you have to swap specifically a block of stone or a block of dirt. And in these cases, not only will it swap the block, it'll also, you know, turn it into the the Lordic version of it. So now it turns into Lordic soil and Lordic stone. So um, thank you to uh, the guys that helped me out. And now we can continue. Um, one thing. So yeah, keep in mind for when you guys are doing that, because it doesn't specifically mention that you have to use stone or dirt for the quest. Anyways, um, now that we're unblocked, we can move on. So for now, I just made some Lordic Stone in the Arcane Forge. As you saw, we can just make it with the Translocation Matrix, too. If we need a large amount of it, I'll set up an automation system for it. But for now, it doesn't look like we need a tremendous amount, but uh, we'll see about that. So next, we now that we have a Lordic Runestone, we have to make it into a utility one from an offense. And then we can make it into the fire one with the Scorching Crystal. All right. We're almost there. So this is done in the Runestone Crafter. And I think this is pretty simple. It's just a two-way process. You put the, the, yeah, you put the crystal on top, the rune on bottom, and you click this Assemble button to make it that. And I assume this just gives you your components back. So yeah, um, not a very interesting crafting mechanism, but hey, whatever, it's done. So now that we finally have this thing, we can, I think the recipe for the blood orb was to uh, put that in a uh, blood altar, a tier one or higher blood altar with 2000 life essence in it. So that has enough, let's just stick it in there. And you see it drains some of the life essence and give us this blood orb. When it's done, you wanna right click it once to link it to you. You see now it says current owner me, and that means it's linked to my um, like my blood network. So when I put it in the blood altar again, it drains some of the life essence out of the blood altar and puts it into my life essence network, blood essence network. Um, for now, we don't use that for anything, but later when we get into like rituals and stuff like that, it'll be very useful. So here's our weak blood orb. Now the next thing in Blood Magic is probably to start making slates. Let's see. Yeah, there's not a quest for it, but the next thing I think I want to do is make slates. Because these are the things that um, are used in the runes, in addition to the Lordcraft runes. So anyways, slates are made... Oh, it uses imbued inscription tiles. Normally it uses stone. So I guess we have to do a bit more Lordcraft. Thankfully, this is very easy. Um, so it's inscription tiles with some mana-infused dust. 
And these, ah, uh, so we need to make more ironwood. Thankfully, I think we have plenty of roots. So that shouldn't be a problem. Let's see. Yeah, we have 164 stacks of roots. And uh, I learned that there is a, in, uh, what's it called? A uh, specialty, I think. Special, specialization. That makes it uh, not consume the... Yeah, makes it not consume the uh, sapling or the you know non the the input. Um, so if we run out of roots, we can still do this. Anyways, uh, but I guess let me go and make us a bunch of that uh, those inscription tiles so that we can start making slates. And finally, I think we're ready to put Lordcraft behind us for a bit. So we can take these imbued description tiles, put them in the blood altar. And after just about a second, they'll turn into a blank slate. Now, since this is only a tier one altar, if we leave the blank slate in there further, it won't go any higher. But um, if when we level our altar up, we can see that uh, the blank slate then will turn into a reinforced slate. And with a tier three altar into an imbued slate, you get the point. All the way up to the, uh, I don't know what tier that was. Tier five, we can make an ethereal slate. So anyways, let's set up a basic system that it can pipe um, tiles in and out of here and maybe even automatically turn it off when the fluid amount gets too low. So one, uh, the intuitive way to put items into here is just to use a hopper, right? But if we use a hopper, what will actually happen is it'll put both tiles in here. And you see that because both tiles are in here, they try to craft at once. It's a little weird because when you do it by hand, you actually literally cannot put multiple items in there but um yeah when you when you use a uh like a hopper or something to do it you can so that means that if you try to do that you will actually end up just putting too many items in here at once and none of them will actually craft so we need a way that only puts a single item in the blood altar at a time so there's a million and a half ways you can actually set this up i prefer to use the extra utilities transfer node because with a transfer filter on the end, you can just set it to single item. Um, you can, I mean, you can, if you want to craft quickly and you have plenty of blood to go around, you can switch it to stack or anything. But anyways, you can set it to single item, and it responds natively to a lever. So if you put, you know, if you apply a redstone signal to it, it stays off. So turn the signal off, and now we can start crafting. Now again, um, I mentioned we want to automatically turn it off when it gets too full. I think or rather when the uh, blood altar gets too empty. Because if we, you know, let me just show you. Right now, if we try to put some blood in it to start crafting, what'll happen is as, it, well, I guess it works, but um, as it crafts, you see it took more than the slated amount of life essence. Because if there's not enough life essence in the altar as it tries to craft, it, uh, it'll it progress backwards. So you see there, it took 800. If I give it 200 more, it's not enough because the progress works backwards while there's not enough blood in there. And in fact, here it's stuck. It won't be able to finish and I don't have enough life to give it. So this is why we want to avoid this situation. All right, here it is, a simple-ish redstone contraption to measure the fullness of our blood altar and turn off the input automatically. So the blood altar emits a redstone signal to a comparator proportional to how full it is. Um, I extend it out one block because I don't want to put a uh, like a potentiometer in either of these two squares. And uh, you'll see why. Well, you, you don't want to put it here because then it'll affect this tr the transfer pipe. And uh, you'll see why I don't want to put one there later. Um, so I extend it out one block, then I have a potentiometer here and this comparator in compare mode. So what I say is, you know, when it's, if I set it low enough, when it's below 10%, it'll turn on. And when it's above 20%, it'll turn off. And then I uh, have a logic gate here, which is just a knot on B, right? So the B column where it's off, output is on, where it's on, output is off. Um, the logic gate can be, you know, it can obviously do up to uh, three um, three input combinatorical logic. Uh, I'm just using it as a one input not gate. So anyways, um, this torch or this redstone lamp here is just to visualize uh, whether the final output signal is on or off. So you see when I bring this low enough, that turns off. And when I set this higher, it turns on. So right now I have it set to four, which means when the blood altar is at least one quarter full, it'll turn on. So... Um, or it'll allow items through. 
So let's put some imbued slates in here and we see the blood altar right now is 10% full and no, uh, no slates are flowing. But if I poke myself a little bit, the blood altar is now more than uh, one quarter full. So you see that it let it slate through. But now that it's less than one quarter full again, the lamp is off. Neat. So with this done, we now have the input side of our blood, al blood altar automation done. Let's handle the output half next. All right, uh, quick intermission. So you'll notice there's a bit of extra stuff here. I'm actually about halfway through recording the next episode when I realized I somehow broke my OBS settings and I was recording a blank screen. So um, for the next about 10 minutes of this, uh, basically for the remainder of this episode, I'll just be putting up a few uh, screenshots that are approximately what I'm talking about at the moment. Terribly sorry. Um, my bad, 100%. Anyways, uh, let's get the show on the road. All right, the output side's a little simpler. So all it is is an item conduit that's set to extract items. Um, I have this lever here just as a just to disable it. So when the lever's on, it turns it off, and that feeds into either a drawer system or a crate. Both of these have filters on the input side, so you know, put blank slates in here. And I don't want to put anything in here for now, so I just have a dummy item in there. This drawer system has enough slots for um, all the, the five different types of slates, which I think will represent the majority of our crafting. So now that we have this all set up, we can begin actually crafting slates in relative bulk. So to do that, I want to start by uh, popping, well, let's start by draining our blood a little bit, and then we can activate regeneration with a golden apple. And then we can just keep donating our blood to the altar, and you'll see it'll automatically put slates in and pull them out for us so we don't you know we just have to worry about our health bar and not about uh and not about you know putting putting more items in there which is pretty cool and you can see that when the blood runs too low it disables the system automatically so we don't have to worry about the problem where we're putting slates in without blood you know without there being blood ready cool so um i'm gonna run this for just a little bit enough to uh get maybe like uh half stack or so of slates and then we can move on to um greater and better things so right now we're filling this up with our blood but i think we can all agree that our blood is far too valuable to be doing magic with so we can uh we can design a system where instead of filling it up with our blood we can use mob blood because that's far less valuable right so i had this brilliant idea uh, instead of since I wasn't going to use my rack for flight uh, flight totem anymore, why don't I get regeneration with it? So it you can get it up to three times to get regeneration three, which I think is actually a higher level of regen than you get from golden apples. And now I no longer have to eat golden apples. Neat. Let's see how this how well this works. Yeah, it's pretty good. I know the author of Blood Magic has, you know, stated that it's not intended that you use, you know, this with regeneration, but we're not going to be abusing this relationship between regeneration and our own blood for very long. Because even while this is, you know, this is fine and all, we can do much better than, uh, than pricking our own fingers for 200 blood per prick, per heart. So, um, yeah, but in order for us to move on, we need to make the Dagger of Sacrifice. And that requires a tier 2 blood altar, as well as an infused lava sword. Okay, that's not too bad. So, um, actually, is this workbench? No, that's not too bad either. Okay, so um, let me start by getting enough uh, of these blank slates that we can make a tier 2 um, blood altar. I think that's it'll be uh, somewhere around a stack. And here we have it, one stack of blank slates. So technically, we can actually just use these blank slates as is and move on to Batania. But right now, I'm not terribly fond of having to sit here and prick my finger, right, to craft more. So let's make a bit more progress in blood magic first. After all, we spent like three days building infrastructure so we can get here. So the first thing we have to do is build these blank slates, which will let us upgrade the tier of our altar. Let's see... It requires our blood orb and for the tier so right now we have a tier one altar to make it a tier two altar we need eight of these 
So with eight, um, we have to replace the, all the stone bricks in the first layer with these. But since I have blocks on top of them already, I'm hoping that I can swap them with the exchanging gadget without having to replace the, uh, you know, the, nope, I have to put those back. Hold on. Well, so much for that plan. Anyways, let's put our comparator back and our levers back. And I don't think we need the signs anymore. All right, so now our blood altar is tier two. Um, we can't, oopsies, we can't tell yet, but let me, let's see, if we make a divination sigil, I believe we'll be able to tell. Divination sigil. So that's done by putting redstone and a blank slate on it. Okay. So if we come over here, we started the alchemy array earlier, we put redstone on it, and then we put a blank slate on it, it does a cool little animation thingy. And in a second it'll spit out a divination sigil. So while we hold this in our hand, we can right click and it'll tell us the amount of LP or uh, life essence in our current, in our blood network. But we can also right click it or just hold it and mouse over a um, blood altar and it'll tell you the current tier. So this is currently a tier 2 blood altar. We can upgrade it to tier 3 then by replacing all the stone bricks on this layer with more blood runes. So this is 20 if I can count right. 5 by side by 4. So let's make 20 more blood runes. And swap those out. Exchanging gadget is very nice for this. All right, and then now if we look at it, it should say that this is a tier um, three, I believe. Yep, current tier three. So all the tier does is choose what. Um, well, it does two things. It unlocks various recipes. So most recipes have a minimum tier, and it unlocks a number of rune slots that you can use to modify the behavior of our blood altar. So right now we're, you know, poking our fingers for 200 LP each, right? If we make these runes of self-sacrifice, we each one increases the amount of LP you get by when you poke yourself by 10%. So because this is a tier 3 altar, we now have 28 slots. So if we replace all of these blank runes with self-sacrifice runes, we can get up to... Uh, What's that? 28. So almost 300%. Almost uh, 800 blood? Right? Almost plus 300. So yeah, just short of 800 blood or life essence per right click. Um, which is actually pretty good. Maybe we'll go down the self sacrifice route instead of the mod sacrifice route, at least for a little. You know what? Give me a second to think about which, which I would rather do. All right, I gave it a little bit of thought, and while we can, you know, with some work, make the self-sacrifice pretty effective, it still ultimately runs into the problem of it is not fully automatable. Because in order for us to fully automate self-sacrifice, uh, even with the help of rituals and stuff, we still need to physically stand near the altar, which isn't always possible. You know, we might be doing stuff, for instance. So, um, given that, I think I will once again go down the mob sacrifice route because it has the advantage of being fully automatable. So, instead of using self-sacrifice runes, then, there are these, let's see, runes of sacrifice, which increase the amount of LP you get from sacrificing mobs um, to the blood altar. So we'll make these. But to make these, we now need to make reinforced slates, which are tier 2 slates. So to do that, let's come over here. And uh, we no longer want to extract tier 1 slates. So let's take that off our filter and make some tier 2 runes. So what we can see now is if we leave a tier 1 rune in the thing a little bit longer, it'll start crafting again. So that's currently a tier 1 rune. And it starts crafting again, and after a couple seconds, it'll tier, turn into a tier 2 rune, or a reinforced slate, I believe. Let's see. This step seems like it actually takes a little while. So um, there are other runes we can use. So there we go. Now it is a reinforced slate, and we can add that to our filter. So as you can see, this process takes a little while. 
Um, and we can put it in the drawer too, I guess. So uh, because this process takes a while, there are other runes we can use to speed it up, such as a speed rune. Here it is. So speed rune is, uh, I think each one increases crafting speed by like 10 or 20%. I think it's 20% off the top of my head. So if you have five of these, the crafting speed doubles. But at the same time, that means that the rate that, you know, your blood gets consumed is increased significantly. So anyways, um, with that said, now that we have a tier 2 altar, we can make the Dagger of Sacrifice. The Dagger of Sacrifice is different be from the Sacrificial Dagger because this takes our blood and the Dagger of Sacrifice is used to kill mobs. So let's go make a infused lava sword. I think to make the infused lava, we need a high-tech workbench, which isn't that bad, and infused lava crystals, which require a lava infuser. All right, looks like just a little bit of crafting. All right, so really quick, the lava infuser is used to make uh, infused lava crystals from regular lava crystals. Now, strangely enough, it doesn't seem to interact with any form of piping. So um, I, I try top, bottom, sides. Um, so yeah, I don't. Apparently, you have to manually put the lava in with buckets, which is kind of annoying. But uh, anyways, well, uh, I think one bucket of lava lasts a fairly long time in here, so it's not like the end of the world that you have to manually bucket lava in. But it is, I don't know, not ideal. Anyways, once we have enough of these lava crystals, we can go ahead and make that sword. And here is the infused lava sword. So the recipe says it takes a tier 2 altar and 3000 LP, both of which we have. So we just place it in there. And a couple seconds later, we have a dagger of sacrifice. Now the difference is you can't right click the dagger of sacrifice to take our own HP, we still need the sacrificial dagger for that. But if there were a mob, say right on this stone slab, we could hit it and that would, you know what, let's actually, um, let's actually get a mob and demonstrate. So I recall we had all these soul vials filled with shulkers down here, which are ideal because shulkers don't move. So if I put one here. Whoopsies, apparently. Oh, that's a half slap. You didn't like being there. Um, this might be close enough. Nope. Uh, hold on. Oh, you dropped a shulker, bro. Um, let me see if I can stick him somewhere where he won't teleport. Now, it looks like wherever I put him, he's going to teleport. Never mind. Let me get another mob. All right, I went to the hunting dimension and found a zombie that volunteered to be sacrificed. Trust me, he volunteered. I didn't I didn't take him or anything. This is not a kidnapping. So um, if we look right now, it has, what's that, 1930 life essence in it. If we hit this zombie with our sacrificial dagger while it's near the blood altar, first of all, it one-shots it automatically, despite the dagger of sacrifice not really doing damage. And it put, what was that, like 600-ish life essence into the blood altar. And that was just from one mob without any modifiers. Now, you know, that's the same as three hearts, right? But the idea is we can use a mob spawner and a way to automatically push mobs to right here where we'll just hit them over and over again to kill them to fill our blood altar. But um, I looked at our recording time and I think we're at a decent wrapping up point for this episode. So um, next time we'll come back and set up that uh, mob spawner system to automatically fill our blood altar with life essence. But for now... Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see you tomorrow in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.